How's it going guys? My name is Kevin. I'm a DP out of Southern California and today we're taking a close look at my innovative Voyager NXT production cart and how it fits into my production workflow. You may see a few DIY hacks and mods I did on my cart which I'll cover in another video but today I'll be focusing mainly on everything that originally came with the cart and all the proprietary accessories from Innovative. Alright here's my real world review on the Innovative Voyager NXT 42 production cart. About six months ago, I purchased the Voyager NXT 42 production cart. Innovative do offer a 30 and a 36 inch version, but I knew I wanted a bigger surface to work with, so I opted for the larger 42 inch. I never thought I'd be so stoked on something as simple as a cart, but here I am, and it's honestly one of my favorite pieces of gear for so many reasons. One of the biggest reasons why I chose this cart is its ability to collapse down into a compact size. I can easily fit it into the back of my Mazda CX-5 along with all the other gear I typically bring on a shoot. The load handle and skate wheels make it easy to move while it's collapsed. The wheels do come off easily using a dovetail style quick release system, but to make things quicker, I typically pack it in and transport with the wheels still attached. If ever I need more room, I can always pack the wheels in the collapse case, but my CX-5 usually has enough space for me to fit everything I need for most shoots. Setting up is so fast and so easy and done without using any tools. As soon as I arrive, I pop my trunk open and get to setting up. The pack latches that keep it collapsed feel very sturdy and are super easy to detach. I typically leave the tires attached just to speed things up. But it also gives me a little compartment to store a few things I always use with my kit, which we'll talk about in a minute. The support beams fold out and lock into place very easily. The top shelf has inserts for the beams that lock with a push button. I'm usually set up and ready to go in less than two minutes. The tire brakes are easily accessible and keep the cart still for when I chuck all my Pelicans on there. I think the load capacity is around four to 600 pounds or something. I don't know if I'm exceeding that, but I'm 32 years old and my back isn't as agile as it used to be. But I still got it, don't get it twisted. Nonetheless, having a cart easily saves me four or five trips of hauling heavy Pelicans and stands back and forth. I really love the quick grip handles. They feel intuitive and just make a lot of sense. You can adjust them to any angle and any height with one hand, and that just allows me to move or lift this thing in any direction. Once I'm on set, I try to maximize the cart's usefulness, and you'll notice that it becomes multi-purposed as I move throughout the day. But starting the day, the cart is mainly used for building up the camera rig. The big 42-inch top shelf gives me a ton of space to lay out camera parts, batteries, and lenses, and the soft felt material keeps everything from getting scratched or damaged. As soon as the cameras are built up and ready to go, the cart turns into Video Village. For Video Village, I set up my monitor on the innovative baby pin system, which is a couple brackets that hold up a long rod with a 5 8 baby pin on the end. I have the Pro Monitor mount, which is great. It allows me to adjust the monitor to accommodate any angle at the twist of a knob. Both are pretty straightforward and easy to set up. And this is just beneficial to have on set for directors, clients, focus pullers, or first ACs, just to have a big screen to view. After Video Village is set up, I usually have a DIT or an assistant set up a little DIT station where we can back up all the dailies. We usually try to have everything backed up, have the project prepped in our editing software, usually with a base color grade so that by the time it gets to the editor, it's ready to be cut. My 15 inch MacBook Pro fits nicely on the workstation. I upgraded to the X top shelf, which basically cuts out the side of the shelf to make it more comfortable for typing on a keyboard. The cable holes are great for cable management and just keep everything clean and out of the way. On the back of the shelf, there are a couple cheese plates with a bunch of quarter 20 mounting holes for mounting lighter accessories. I'll sometimes mount a small HD monitor up or sometimes a small LED desk light. And if ever I'm on a bigger location where we're moving around to different areas, everything on this cart feels super sturdy and mobile. The overall build quality gives me confidence that I can roll this thing around most terrain and not worry about it falling apart. The tires are big so they're smooth on rougher terrain, and the rubber makes it so rolling down a sidewalk doesn't sound like a train's rolling through. It's really a production on wheels. As far as cons go, there aren't really too many. It's hard to get a cart wrong. But if I had to be picky, here's a few. 
The handhold cutouts on the bottom shelf are pretty uncomfortable to grab. They can be painful to grip, especially when you're lifting the weight of the cart. Not a big deal, but you know, I'm being picky. The overall weight of the cart. This is kind of a pro and a con. I like it because the majority of the weight is in the wheel system, which stabilizes the cart when a lot of stuff is mounted up on the top. But if you ever have to lift this thing while it's collapsed, maybe at an airport, or you just have to lift it up and over something, it's pretty heavy. I think it comes in around 95 pounds, give or take. It's hard to come to terms with the cost of not only the cart, but the accessories. They're really, really expensive for what seem like simple add-ons. But stay tuned, in another video, I'm gonna break down a few hacks and mods that literally save you hundreds and hundreds of dollars instead of buying the proprietary accessories, and in most cases, work a lot better. Like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I come out with that video. And overall, it's just a high premium that you're paying for the cart and all the accessories. It's hard to justify how a cart can cost as much as this does, but at the same time, there's a ton of intangible value you get just having it on set. All right, we already know this cart's expensive, but it was really an investment for me at the end of the day. It's a tool that saves me time and it makes my job as a DP more efficient and enjoyable. To me, yes, I would say, yeah, it's worth it. It's worth spending the extra money if it means you can focus on your craft and your creativity rather than fighting your gear on set. Having any tools that keep you organized, that do the heavy lifting, that really streamline your production workflow, they ultimately build your confidence as a DP or an AC or a DIT. And when you have that confidence in yourself, you'll find that you instill confidence in your client. And when your client has confidence in you, the chances of you getting more work, it just increases. All right, I hope you enjoyed my real world review of my innovative Voyager NXT production cart. If you're ever in Southern California and you wanna rent this cart, please visit my share grid page, which I'll link in the description. First time renters will receive 15% off their first rental if they like this video and then they subscribe. Also, if you wanna see more behind the scenes, production breakdowns, rig picks, and more content, follow me on Instagram at Kevin Reyes. All right, nothing but love y'all. See you guys next time.